So Steffi asked me um, what is special about Brussels DLD. Um, the DLD has always been an open platform, open for many different opinions, open for many different kind of people, for people from university, from business, from politics, from all over the place, from think tanks. And uh, we try to be an open platform where you can discuss and where you can find new things that are interesting. So le let me give a little background to what's special about Brussels. Uh, 20 years uh, since the inception of commercial internet is what Berners-Lee is saying. Uh, maybe it's 24 if you look at the invention of the browser and most likely that was a very interesting point in time because you got connected to the internet. So it was not only theoretically available, you could really use it. So we have basically seen 12 or 14 times Moore's Law and what happened in the meantime. And if you look today at the most valuable companies, and I took the top 10, you see that seven out of 10 right now are internet companies. Maybe you give a little exemption to Microsoft because that was a big company already before the internet started. But today, clearly, majority is coming from valuations driven by the internet. And if you compare the turnover of these companies with the, turn, with the GDP of Sweden or Switzerland, you see that the revenues of these companies are bigger than the GDP of Sweden, and it's uh, not far away from Switzerland. If you would take into account Tencent, uh, not at their turnover, but at their GMV, their, goods, their, their gross merchandise value, it is clearly above Switzerland. So we talk about very significant companies that have been coming up in a very short period of time, 12 to 14 times uh, Moore's Law. So clearly, no longer there is a reason for protecting them specially. There is no reason for hurting them in a kindergarten. These companies are adult, and we should think about them like that. Nevertheless, we see commercial internet companies are exempted from existing law and liabilities. You may know the, for instance, a Section 230 that was uh, established under the Clinton administration in 1996 that basically allow tech firms exemption from liability for nearly all kinds of illegal content and actions perpetrated by their users. So you see that there is still a lot of things that are going on protecting especially these companies. The Financial Times said a couple of days ago, get out of jail free card for certain internet companies. And I think that has been good in the very beginning. That means in the Clinton administration, the middle of the 90s, Today, we, don't no long, we, we do not longer need it. So what is the right um, res recipe for regulation? What's the right level for regulation? I think we should debate about this. Now, you could believe that um, self-responsibility, that self-regulation um, can make all this better. And we do not need any laws and regulation because self-regulation, eventually we do it. Uh, but if you have a discussion with people who are involved in this, you see that mostly there's a refusal to take responsibility for societies because the argument always is shareholder value. Let me give you a few examples. We should not engage in discussions about the potential threats of AI. We should promote AI as much as possible because it fosters our company's success. It's up to, to, to society to sort out the implications. That is a quote I can't give the name because these are all discussions under Chattanooga's rules that I frequently hear if we come to significant topics. And AI is a significant topic, and I think everybody is concerned and, and looking forward to what AI really means. Um, we have an invasion into our privacy. Um, and if you take a couple of quotes, the deficiencies we see today are the loss of private data, misinformation. That's Mr. Berners-Lee, uh, what he's mentioning in an open letter. So a lot is happening there. Or if you read Jaron Lanier, internet users become the product that is being sold to others. Can we leave it that way? And if you look at the way data is collected and look at online articles, for instance, you see that there are a lot of data points taken not by the company that is having or that is publishing the article, most likely this is a company that knows the least about their readers, but behind that there is a whole ecosystem of people who are taking the data and who are using the data. Um, and basically, everybody of these companies own the data completely. So that is a by-invitation uh, data sharing model, um, where only the starting point is not collecting anything. So we have to discuss about what is the right amount of 
private data and where should, who should have it and how should we treat it. And last but not least, we are seeing new monopolies based on network effects that kill competition. And that is not argued anymore. It's very difficult to deal with for the uh, antitrust authorities because there are many new legal issues. But nobody's arguing that we have these kind of new monopolies. And there are even people standing up saying that new monopolies are needed because the amount of innovation that we have to do is only possible if we have these kind of monopolies. Interestingly enough, the same people are saying education is overrated and people should leave on university early um, in order to start a company. So there's an interesting thing going on and I think we have to address the issue, what, how should we regulate monopolies? What is the right amount of regulation? When is it really disturbing something or destroying something? And when is it helpful to create a better ecosystem? The agenda tries to cover at least a couple of these points today. So you see discussion about the internet, the European internet economy, at least at their state, the, the current status. You see that we try to look into the, um, the, the data flows. You see that we try to discuss about the latest um, decision by the antitrust authorities here in Brussels on, the, on a special Google case. There are many Google cases out there. And we try to think about what is the right amount of copyright and have that discussion on stage. So you could say DLD Europe, why DLD? DLD tries to bring together international experts from private sectors, think tanks, governments, science and arts, examining the digitalization of our economies, of science, arts and societies, and drive the, advancement, the advancements of the society. So I think it needs an open platform to discuss all this, because there is not an easy solution to what we are discussing, by far not an easy. So we really have to have discussions about it. And why Brussels? I think it was John Frank last year, and uh, I looked it up in the video, and it was you. Uh, Brussels is a center of regulation for the IT industry. Washington DC talks about it, but doesn't really do much. Brussels acts. So if you wouldn't have a mission state, why in Brussels? Thanks for delivering. So thank you very much for being with us, and I hope that sets a little bit the stage of what we are doing today and connect with each other because meeting and discussing among you and later on I hope you come to our evening party where many people from parliament will join us and many people from, um, special, from, from the administration will join us and have a lively discussion even in the evening. Somebody promised me that like in the last years we will have sunshine in the evening. So it doesn't really look like it, um, but it was spectacular over the last years and I hope we make it tonight as well. Thanks for your attention.